The Russians were pioneers in space. They successfully challenged the United States in the dramatic race into the cosmos. This is an account of the Russian space achievements. space rocket was launched in 1957, but the theoretical basis for what the Russians would call cosmonautics was formulated a half century earlier in Kaluga, a small town near Moscow. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a school teacher, conducted primary research on spaceflight mechanics. In 1903, he theorized that a liquid fuel rocket could carry man into space. By 1914, he published a definitive text that would become the Bible of Russia's monotics. During the first two decades of the 20th century, Tsiolkovsky's works drew little attention. They were viewed as nothing more than a subject for science fiction films. Russia did not even have a liquid propellant rocket motor. The first two were built in 1930, one by Valentin Glushko at the Gasodynamics Laboratory in Leningrad, the other by Friedrich Zander and his team at the Aircraft Engine Construction Institute in Moscow. In 1931, Sergei Korolev, an energetic 24-year-old engineer, joined Sander's team. He was instrumental in securing financial support from the military and official registration. A large cellar in a Moscow apartment house was to become a new laboratory. After Tsander's death in 1933, Korolev succeeded him. He supervised the construction of Russia's first liquid fuel rocket, the GIRD-09. Launched in August 1933, fueled by a mixture of liquid oxygen and thickened gasoline, it reached an altitude of 120 feet. New models were immediately produced. Mikhail Tukhachevsky, the Red Army's chief procurement officer and a passionate advocate of rocketry, wanted a unified rocket science center. In 1933, the Gasodynamics Laboratory from Leningrad and Korolev's Moscow Rocketeers were merged into the Jet Research and Development Institute, with Korolev as a department head. He developed dozens of projects for ballistic and winged missiles, but most were unrealized. Imprisoned during Stalin's purges, Korolev was assigned to design a rocket booster for live bomber. Ironically, it was the German V-2 rocket strikes at London that saved Korolev. The V-2s designed by Hitler's chief rocketeer, Werner von Braun, as imperfect and unreliable as they were, demonstrated to the world the potential of the missile as a weapon. Stalin realized he needed to intensify his rocket program. In 1945, the Americans and the Russians started searching for Germany's missile secrets, an overture to the fierce competition that would escalate for the next 40 years. Almost 400 missile experts surrendered to the U.S. troops. Werner von Braun, fleeing from the advancing Red Army, broke his arm in a car accident before surrendering to the U.S. 7th Army in Bavaria. 
the Americans captured hundreds of V-2s along with production and testing equipment. The Russian search team, led by the recently released Korolev, had a much more difficult task. Rocket facilities in the Soviet occupation zone were thoroughly destroyed. But the team managed to locate detailed descriptions of the V-2 and assembled a dozen missiles from parts discovered at the Nordhausen missile plant. The V-2s were shipped home in a sealed train. General Dmitry Ustinov, the People's Commissar for Armament, viewed rocketry as a cornerstone of the future Soviet military might. He ordered Korolev's return and appointed him director of the newly formed Liquid Fuel Rocket Center. Korolev and his engineers were assigned the task of testing the captured V-2 and replicating it. In 1946, a test range was hastily constructed in Kapustinya on the southern border. Tarpaulin tents became home for the staff. Railway carriages housed the labs and ground control facilities. Tests of von Braun's V2s began there in 1947. Within a year, a replica was created. This missile, designated the R1, was first successfully launched in October 1948 and flew 180 miles. The Rocketeer's ultimate goal was to create an intercontinental ballistic missile. Von Braun's scientists, attached to the US Army, had similar objectives and a considerable lead. Korolev's ambition was to catch up and win. Thirteen R-1 launches were made. Nearly half the missiles failed. But there were successes rare and hard one. By the early 50s, earlier models evolved into the powerful R5, capable of delivering nuclear warheads up to 750 miles. Apart from their military use, missiles became research tools. The Americans began biological research for spaceflight. The Russians followed. Since 1951, missiles equipped with pressurized capsules carried dogs 60 miles into the upper atmosphere. The animals endured high G-forces at takeoff and six minutes of weightlessness. dog's heartbeat, respiration and blood pressure were monitored during the 20-minute flights. The capsule, separated from the rocket, fell to an altitude of four miles, then parachuted down. In the 50s, dozens of dogs, rabbits, rats and mice performed suborbital flights up to 280 miles above the sea level. 